Hello everyone, this is Kenny Brony from Cambrotech and welcome back to the channel. So in this series of videos, we are learning Python and this is specifically SNG207 Programming for Engineers, a course taught at the University of Ghana. So if you have been following along, we have this particular structure we have been following and this has been put together like the chapters of a book. So currently we are on chapter 18 where we are discussing Python classes or basically object-oriented programming. Now, I believe this is the third video in this particular section. And in the first video, we looked at some theoretical concepts of what object-oriented programming was all about. We looked at what a class is and what an object is. And in the second video, we actually built some of these objects in code and assigned attributes in here, as you see. So in this particular video, and I would rather create in a new file so that we can have a new clean slate and work some few things out over here. So I'll click anywhere outside of this scope, as you can see, and then I'll click on this new file and I'll call this class.py. So here I have class.py and I would want to start writing my code over here. So in this particular video, we are going to look at methods and let's rewrite our baking pan class. So I'll say class and I'll call this baking pan once again. I'll bring in a column and for now I'll say pass. Then we created something like bread one and this bread one is going to be an object and is going to be a creation or an instance of this baking pan. Then let me go back here. Let me collapse this and rather let me rather do it this way so you normally have this um button over here which is going to split your screen into two and i'll just close this so here i have the new thing i'm working on and here i have the python class at least from the last video so we are going to create a method and a method is basically a function so remember when we're dealing with strange methods and things of that sort I made a profound statement and that was a function and a method are the same thing but they assume different names under different jurisdiction or under different scope and I give a classical example where let's say I teach a class at the University of Ghana and among my students let's say one of my students happens to be a family relative and that person is for instance my uncle so by virtue of the fact that that person is my mother's brother so I'll call that person an uncle but under the scope or within the jurisdiction of the University of Ghana, the relationship that exists between that person and I can no longer or it may not be right to say that that person is my uncle and I'm the nephew. It is definitely going to be a student lecturer relationship. When we go home, then we can assume that uncle nephew relationship. It's as simple as that. But being in the University of Ghana campus or being at home doesn't change anything about me. It's just that we assume different rules or different personalities under different jurisdictions. And that's basically what a method and a function is going to do. So let me just define a function over here, which we already covered in the previous chapter. And here we have the dev keyword and let's look at something we did. So we had something like my function and I'll bring in a colon over here. And inside of my function, I just want to print something like this. This is my baking pan function. So we have this is my baking pan function right over here. Let me just shrink this a little bit. So we are working in this left side of the window. So I'll save this. And now when I hover around this, we get to see that this is indeed a function. Good. Now, if I'm to cut this, so I'll do a control X over here and bring it inside of this baking pan class. And let me do an indentation over here. Now you could clearly see that the my function we have over here is within the baking pan class. Now when I hover my mouse around this, we don't get to see function again, but then we see method. And that's the reason why I'm saying that. My students, when we come to school, it is a student lecturer relationship. But then when we go outside of school, when we go home, it then becomes a nephew-niece relationship or a nephew-uncle relationship. And that's exactly what we see over here. So under the scope of 
a class this then becomes a method and it becomes a method because we can only assess it within the class and this is what i mean now we cannot do something like calling this my function so let me do a control c over here and do a control v over here we cannot call it this way if i try running this we definitely would get an error over here and it says this my function is not defined and it's not defined because indeed our system does not see it it is only seen within the scope of baking pan so now if i bring baking pan over here and i do a dot remember what i said about the dot operator whenever we use the dots it basically infer that we want to go into it so now when we go into baking pan we do have my function over here so now when i click on this to select this and i'll call this and now when i run this i do get this my baking pan function in this case then we can change this into a method all right so everything is looking good but then this is going to inform us to do something very interesting and that's why i would want us to have this on the right hand side showing up over here so we know that a function within the scope of a class is referred to as a method and later on we are going to know some distinct characteristics of a function and a method even though they are the same thing in a lot of ways so now here we have this one of the first methods you would want to do or you would want to have when creating a class is what we call the constructor or the init method in the case of python so here we have where we are assigning these values over here so flower was equal to soft and stuff like that and like i said in the previous video this is not helping us implement dry or better still we are repeating ourselves so in this essence we don't want to repeat ourselves in this particular way so there's a special method we have over here and i'll say def and i'll do underscore underscore in it underscore underscore and i'll pass in a parenthesis over here so now the values that i want to assign to baking pan or in a more generic sense the attributes what makes this baking pan unique and for which reason this bread objects we need to pass these attributes over here so clearly we know that okay for a baking pan the attributes or the ingredients we will need this flour sugar and special ingredients so now i can pass flour over here i'll do a comma then i'll say sugar i'll do a comma and then finally i'll say special underscore ingredients then i need to bring in a colon over here and i'm going to say pass so that at least I don't have any error now let me shrink this up a little bit and please be very observant over here because something interesting is happening and i'm going to re-echo or re-emphasize this over and over again now you could see that we have this flower highlighted over here now when i hover around this it tells me that this is flower or this is um, a parameter when i hover around this it tells me that this is also a parameter when I hover around this, it tells me that this is a parameter, I mean the special ingredients. But then the first one, which is also a parameter, but then you could see that it doesn't show up the same way as the others show up. And this is almost highlighted. In the case of these ones, they are grayed out. And now, if you remember some of the things we did when we were working with functions, whenever you have a parameter, which is not used it will be grayed out until you use it so it is almost as if this one is being used and the others are not being used now as a matter of principle whenever we are defining or we are bringing in the init method we need to pass in the instance of the class now let's go back to some of the things i've already spoken about now remember in our presentation we said a class is a blueprint for creating objects. So that we already know because we have our baking pan and we want to create, for instance, a wheat bread. And over here, I'm saying that the object, which is now the bread one or the bread two, then becomes an instance of the class. So let's bear that in mind. The object then becomes the instance of the class. So having said this, all that we need to do is, we are saying that this bread one is the instance of this class. 
and if you are passing in parameters over here we need to pass in the instance first so in order not to also confuse a lot of people we pass in the keyword self so now self becomes the instance so now when i hover around this you could see that initially before bringing in self when i hover around flower you see that i have self at baking pan over here and these ones are pretty much generic as compared to the other okay now if i bring in self over here now you can see that this one the flower now becomes like any other one i have over here and now when i hover around self it says that this self is self at baking pan and remember what i said self is the instance of the class just as we have over here as bread one now we need to set in these parameters or these attributes and all that we can do is in the context of the init method bread one which is the instance of the class is being represented as self over here so now let's come back to what we were doing over here when we were setting attributes we did something like bread one dot flower is equal to flower so instead of we using bread one over here it is being represented by self so now i can simply do self dot flower is equal to flower over here and i can see that now flour has been highlighted it is only sugar and special ingredient that has been grayed out okay and that's the reason why i needed to show you this like i said this self we have over here is taking the place of bread one because i mean come to think about it whichever class you create by default python wouldn't know the name of the instance so by default let's just use self over there and whichever name you use when you are writing your own code wouldn't have to conflict so python would definitely understand that okay self is representing the object or the instance of the class as you have over here and that's similar to what you are doing over here and now i can do self dot for instance sugar in this case it was bread one dot sugar okay and here we have this bread one but then it is being represented as self over here now i'll pass in sugar over here now somebody may be asking why won't i pass in soft and 20 over here i'm not passing in soft and 20 because whenever i create a bread object i'll then pass in those values as arguments over here and they'll be sent to these parameters and they'll be fixed in here all right now let's move on so i can do solve dots and this is the only time i kind of encourage students to rather come in here and come and do a control c so come and copy and now when you do self dot control v you now do is equal to control v over here so everything is looking good now if i'm to save this and try printing out bread one as our object over here now when i save this and run this we get a problem and it says there's a type error our baking pan dot the init method in there missing re three required positional arguments we looked at these positional arguments when we were dealing with functions and these arguments are flour sugar and special ingredients so now whenever we create a bread or an object once we have this init method the moment we create an object it is automatically going to be invoked it is automatically going to be invoked and for which reason we need to pass in these arguments to replace flour sugar and special ingredients so now what i can do here is i can inside of this i'm going to pass in the flour which i'm going to say soft then i'll do a comma and you can see that the sugar shows up over here in the lookup as you can see over here and i'm saying 20 grams and the special ingredient i'm going to pass over here is wheat so now when i save this and run my program again i don't get any problem at least i get this object created inside of this memory location we have over here this we already know so now i can come back here to some of the things i was doing especially when i was dealing with bread one and bread two so now that i've created bread one i can simply do bread one and now when i do a dot i want to go into it okay remember intuitively we are saying that the dot operator means you want to go into bread one and now if i go into bread one because bread one is a creation or an instance of this class baking pan when i go into bread one 
I'll have access to every attribute I have in here. So for instance, when I do bread one dot flyer and save this and I run this, I do get soft over here. In that same way, if I do bread one dot special ingredient, save this and run this code, I do get wheat over here. So everything is looking good. Now what we have done over here is going to help us maintain the dry principle. We are not going to repeat ourselves in a lot of ways. So now let's go back to an instance where we want to create bread two. So in order to create bread two, we only come in here, do bread two is equal to, then we bring our baking pan class. Then we just have to set our attribute. So I'll say hard, then I'll say 10 for our sugar quantity. And inside of the special ingredient, I can say banana. So over here, I'm creating a banana bread. And let me just clear what I have over here. Now, what we have in here is now representing everything we have, I mean, on our right hand side from the very point we have in line 11 to line 14. So we are replacing four lines of code with just one line as we have seen on line 8 over here. And this is making our code dry or we are not repeating ourselves because chances are if you are to type sugar let's say 20 times we may get it wrong especially even with special ingredients so now if i come back here and do a print of my bread two and if i do a dot i now want to go into bread two and i want to print out special ingredients now when i save this and run i do get banana over here all right so this is looking good and this is going to be the first method you are ever going to create whenever you are working with classes in python so now a quick recap and at this point let me just close this so that you have a much wider slate over here now before i conclude there are some few things i'd want to show you and let's assume we are printing something from bread 2 and over here we are saying bread 2 dot special and not necessarily special ingredient so when i say bread 2 dot special and run this we do get an error over here and this is an attribute error so it says baking pan object has no attribute special so yes we know that these are parameters because these are things we are putting or we are passing inside of the parentheses of this special danda or magic method this init method we have over here now they also refer to as attributes because they come together to define our class and these are basically data so anything we pass in here is data in the next video we are going to write other methods where we are going to add functionality so in object oriented programming one of the advantages in here is we can put together data and functionality to make a very good case for everything that we would want to create so now currently when we pass in or when we try printing out something that is not setting as an attribute over here we do get an error but then if i'm to do special ingredients this way then indeed we get a banana printed out for us now before i conclude let me show you something over here and i'm putting up a comment over here on line three now there were some few things i was trying to explain now what we have on line three where we have self.flower is equal to flower it's almost like we're doing this and let me use the bread two as an example remember when we're setting attributes in the first code we did something like bread two dot flour and we set that to soft in the other video i mean and i said something like this self is indeed the instance so in the case of bread two we are replacing this in the scope of this init method ourself now this can be anything but then let's not complicate our life over here let's just use the word self over here and everyone who reads our code is going to understand exactly what we are trying to implement so this is going to be the end of this video now if you found value in the content i'm putting out over here kindly support my work by subscribing to the Cambridge tech channel also don't forget to hit on the notification button so that anytime i release a video you'll be duly notified Share this video with friends and family who will find this content very useful. At Cambrotech, we say learn programming. You can do it. Bye-bye and catch you in the next video.